Whenever you're doing chemical kinetics problems and especially integrated rate law problems, this information is excellent to have memorized. It essentially breaks down for a zero order, first order, and second order process or reaction what the integrated rate law is going to be, what the concentration of the reactant versus time is going to look like graphically, what the linear plot to determine the rate constant is going to be, and also the half-life formulas. So I would consider maybe taking a screenshot of this or somehow copying it down so that you'll have it for your own reference. In the following problems, you'll see how all of this is utilized. Okay, in number one here, I say a compound X decomposes in a zero order process with this rate constant. And I ask if the initial concentration was 0.09 molar, at what time would 5% of compound X remain? So the first thing you should think about when they say zero order process is the integrated rate law for a zero order process or a zero order chemical reaction. And that's right here. And you should have that memorized from the table I just showed you. And the most important thing you have to kind of derive yourself for this problem is that 5% of compound X remaining means this mathematically. It means that the concentration of our reactant, and we just call it A in general, in this case it's compound X, but we're saying the concentration of our compound at time T is going to be equal to 5% of what it began as, right? That's what this means mathematically. So our concentration at time t is gonna look like this, right? So that's what I'll put in for in place of concentration of our compound at time t. And then I simply substitute in all the other variables except for time because that's what I'm solving for. So I started out a sub zero with 0.09 molar and they gave us our K, 6.1 times 10 to the negative three molar per minute. And notice here, they gave us our K in molarity per minute. That means our time is gonna be in minutes, okay? So you have to make sure those units match. So this is simply an algebra problem from here. You isolate T and you find that at 14.02 minutes, 5% of compound X would remain. Okay, number two says a radioactive isotope decays in a first order process with a half-life of 14.8 hours. What percentage of this radioactive isotope remains after 36 hours? So since I saw first order and half-life, the first things I wrote down were the first order integrated rate law and the half-life formula for a first order process. And it turns out you have to use both in this situation. But the real trick to this problem is knowing how to mathematically represent this percentage remaining concept. So percentage remaining, the way that you represent this is pretty intuitive. You basically say the amount or concentration you have left at time t out of the total amount that you started with at time zero. So it's basically the fraction you have left of your compound and then you multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. So the way that we use this now is we say, okay, this is going to be our compound at time t. We want to know the percentage remaining. And I actually didn't include the 100 here. I just kind of did that at the end. Um, but you know that when we multiply by 100, we change a decimal into a percentage. So when I changed a t to a t over a zero, I divided this by a zero. So that means I had to divide the other side by a zero. So my first step was to divide both sides by a sub zero. That canceled this out. So I was left with a sub t or concentration of my radioactive isotope at time t over the amount that I started with equals e to the negative kt. I actually didn't have k though. I had to use the half-life formula to obtain it. So I was given the half-life t is 14.8, that's the amount of time it takes for half of this radioactive isotope to disappear, equals 0.693 over k, isolate k and you get 0.047. So I plugged in 0.047 here, my time was 36 hours, always make sure your time units match, hours and hours, so we're good here, no conversions necessary. Once you type this into your calculator, you get for this term here, remember this represents the fraction remaining, 0.184, then we multiply that by 100 to get a percentage, and you end up with 18.4% remaining after 36 hours. 
Okay, here's the last problem I'd like to do. So for the reaction, A plus B goes to C, the concentration of A was monitored over time. And I have that data right here. They wanna know what is the order of this reaction in terms of A. So this data here shows us that at, for example, five seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, and 40 seconds, what the concentration of A was in molarity or moles per liter. So of course, A is a reactant and its concentration is gonna decrease over time because it's being used up to make product. And in order to solve this problem, I wanna remind you of some information that I showed you on that chart at the beginning of the video. Okay, this row here, the linear plot to determine K, the rate constant, is gonna be very important to solving this problem. You can see that for each type of process, a zero order, first order, and second order process, we use different units on the X and Y axes in order to achieve a slope that is straight, right? A straight line implies that the slope stays the same. Whenever you have a straight line, the slope remains constant. That's an important principle to understand. Okay, so like I said, a straight line implies that the slope remains constant. So we wanna figure out what is the order of this reaction with respect to A. So the way that I approached this problem is I tested a few probable cases. I, th I said maybe it's zero order, first order, or second order. We know if it's zero order, then if we plot the concentration of A over time, then we will get a straight line. The concentration of A will be on the y-axis and time will be on the x-axis, and we'll plot a straight line with slope negative K. If the reaction is first order with respect to A, then if we plot the natural log of the concentration of A on the y-axis and time on the x-axis, then we will get a straight line, and again, the slope will be negative K. However, if the reaction is second order with respect to A, then it will actually be the inverse of the concentration of A over time that will plot a straight line, and in that case, it'll be positive K as our slope. So how do we test all of this? How do we see which units are gonna produce a straight line? Well, we have to remember that slope is equal to rise over run. And another way to think about slope is we take a second Y value minus a previous Y value over a second X value minus a previous X value. So that's exactly what I did using this data here. So I first tested whether the reaction was zero order with respect to A. And again, if it's zero order, I'm gonna use these units to see if I have a constant slope. So the concentration of A, I started with my second point here and went back to my first. So my Y2 was 12.2, my Y1 was 148.4, got those from right here. And then my X2 was 10, my X1 was five. So that gave me a slope of negative 27.24 from my first point to my second point. Then I tested from my second point to my third point. And hopefully you can see where I got those numbers here. My Y's are here and here, my X's are here and here. And you can see that the slope changed, right? So this must not be a straight line. So the reaction must not be zero order with respect to A. So then I went on to test whether it was first order with respect to A. And remember, if it's first order with respect to A, then the natural log of the concentration of A over time will plot a straight line. In other words, the slope will remain constant from point to point. So I took the natural log of 12.2 minus the natural log of 148.4 for my y2 minus y1. You can see it's the same exact thing as up here except I took the natural log of the numbers over 10 minus five and I got a slope of negative 0.5. I then tested the slope between points two and three. Here I got, again, the numerator, same thing just taking the natural log, natural log of 0.0822 minus the natural log of 12.2 over 20 minus 10 and I got the same slope. So that was enough evidence to say that this reaction must be first order in A because plotting the natural log of the concentration of A over time produced constant slope from point to point. Thus, it must be plotting a straight line. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.